I have a friend whose life has largely tracked with mine. Same high school, same college, rabbinical school, roommates, children, roughly the same age. We got married within just a few months of each other. We have studied together, we have talked together, argued from time to time, laughed and cried together. Our kids, when they were young, both loved tunnels. And they thought that those you know, large baskets, this is before the days of Easy Pass, the large baskets to collect the tolls at New York bridges were actually very big tzedakah boxes. But this past year, his son at age 37 sadly succumbed to a complication from thyroid cancer, leaving a wife and two young children. I could not attend the funeral in California in person. I did join via Zoom. And my friend said this at the funeral for his son. His words have haunted me, stayed with me, and they are some words I need to share with you. He stated, it really is amazing to me just in how many ways and how many times one can say, I can't believe this, or some variation on that theme. I think there is good reason why in the Torah, after one of the more prominent tragic episodes, the death of two young priests, Nadav and Avihu, their father, Aaron, the high priest, is silent. By Yidom Aharon, Aaron, the man who served as Moses' spokesperson, the man who always found the right words to say, failed to find the right words to say, because there are no right words let alone words to say, except, except some variation on, I can't believe this has just happened. But whenever we are faced with the unspeakable, he goes on, it's best to begin with words that are always good words to speak. And these are words of Torah. From Ecclesiastes, the biblical author known as Kohelet, we learn, the race is not won by the swift, nor the enemy defeated by the valiant, nor is bread obtained by the clever, nor is wealth accumulated by the intelligent, nor is favor secured by the learned, for the time of mischance comes to all. It's from chapter nine. The time of mischance comes to all, he writes, and Kohelet states the occurrence of mischance is not as a punishment from God, even though it may feel like one. It is not as a test from God, even though it may feel like one, but simply as a reality of life. And the mischances in life are not born equal. Sometimes the mischance is an annoyance. Sometimes it's disruptive. And sometimes it really changes your whole life. But Kohelet reminds us that they will come. His words were meant perhaps to prepare us, though we are never truly prepared. That's how he began. And now here, all of us, we all know this kind of reality. In our community this past year, a large number of losses, tragic losses, pandemic-related, and not. And as always, even when the loss has been expected, it strikes like a sledgehammer. In the depths of the pandemic, there was a sign at a Japanese amusement park right outside the entrance to the roller coaster. It stated, for purposes of safety, please do not scream aloud. Scream in your heart. There are many people who walk around, justifiably so, with a scream in their hearts. It takes time to emerge from the immobilizing prison of loss, but surrounded by family and friends and community, and perhaps even by a power that remains mysterious but is still present, we find some footing again, the landscape of our lives regaining a bit of gravity. And I would like to say to us all that the way forward is shown by other teachings of Kohelet, by Ecclesiastes, states that teacher, there is a time to be born, there is a time to die, a time to work, a time to play, a time to dance, a time to mourn. There is a time for every purpose under heaven. 
and if we are fortunate, the experience of life, and perhaps especially the experience of loss, can help give us a purpose. The comedian Stephen Colbert survived a tragic childhood guided by a deep and earnest Catholic faith that he maintains to this day. He taught Sunday school well into his show business career. His mother, who bore the brunt of the tragedy when she lost her husband and two sons in a plane crash, was his example. Try to look at this moment in the light of eternity, she would tell him. Look at the big picture, was the implication. And his purpose emerged to give people joy, to make people laugh. Sometimes we just mistake what our purpose in the world ought to be. There's a man, according to the story, who loved to go boating. One day he encountered a dangerous storm. The winds grew strong, the waves increased in size, threatening to capsize his tiny vessel. Realizing that his situation was growing desperate, he radioed for help. Yelling into the microphone and crying to the Coast Guard, Mayday, Mayday, I think I am going down. What's your position? Asked the voice of the Coast Guard over the radio. I'm the head of pediatrics, was the response. <laughs> we have stated it so often, friends. Life is too short to waste a single precious moment. And at this hour of memory, we can be students, learning from the lessons of our loved ones, the fragility of existence, the power and purpose of every single day. There's a tombstone someplace that reads, here lies a man who went out of this world without ever realizing why he came into it. I hope that might never be said of us. On Rosh Hashanah, many of us made promises to ourselves of what we might do this year to bring more meaning, more help to others, to be the difference in the lives of others, to be students of the wisdom to grow. And we can at any time in our lives embrace the role we have to nurture love, to convey that we care, but to ease the burden of new acts and responsibilities, I suggest we try the very best we can to drop one of the heaviest loads we carry around with us. And that, of course, is the theme of this day, forgiveness. Do you remember Harold Kushner's statement, to bear a grudge is like allowing someone to live rent-free in your head without your permission? It's just not worth it. It's been stated before, it's not that the gates of heaven opened up and let me in. I was freed because the gates of hell opened up and let me out. And there is no greater hell than walking around angry, resentful, feeling hurt all the time. Forgiveness is represented by the Hebrew word mechila. It comes from a root word, halal, that means space, space, open territory, which is to say that the purpose of forgiveness is not a superficial patching over of tension. It is not a desire to lead a frictionless life. It's different than that. To reconcile, to forgive, is to recreate a space between people, especially the people we love and who love us, to clear out the sludge of resentment, of envy, of the small hurts that invade our lives. Forgiveness to, is to create a space for goodness and joy that they might both re-enter and claim land. And forgiveness is to recreate an opening to rejuvenate a shared bond by creating a space in our own hearts to allow us to see what is positive and beautiful so that resentment and anger are shown the door. In our lives, isn't it the case that most often it's the trivial, it's the tiny 
that causes the greatest annoyance, the little disagreements, the little disappointments. The jungle explorer once prayed, Lord, deliver me from the gnats. I can take care of the elephants. And now, on this holiest day of the entire year, at this sacred hour of memory, aren't those gnats just too meaningless to allow presence in our lives? We are here on this Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, enabled and ennobled by the memory of our loved ones to use this hour to treasure what truly counts, to live, to give, to yearn for the good and to burn for a more meaningful life in what will be, God willing, a far more righteous world and to release the heavy burden of resentment. That way, we can embrace the fragility of every moment, but also the power of every hour. We don't walk through this alone, you know. My friend concluded his eulogy for his beloved son with a lullaby, a lullaby from Billy Joel and the words. Good night, my angel. Now it's time to sleep, and still so many things I want to say. Remember all the songs you sang for me when we went sailing on an emerald bay. And like a boat out on the ocean, I am rocking, go to sleep. The water's dark, and deep inside this ancient heart, you'll always be a part of me. They will, they will. They'll always be a part of us and we of them. And so will the God of the universe who heals broken hearts and urges us forward to the healing light of each new day. <laughs>